This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Calling to order the meeting of the Ad Hoc Grant Search Committee for May 20th at 1.02 p.m. Uh, we have Kate and myself from the Grant Committee. Uh, Diana won't be with us today. Um, and we have Christina, Janet, Dennis, Ted, and Kate from the COA. So uh, we've got a couple of agenda items. I don't see anybody out there. Open time for the public. So we will just jump in. Um, we'll focus on the SIG grant until probably about 145, and then hopefully we'll be done by then. And uh, Chris Madsen is going to come in on a historical commission grant that we're also starting to work on at 145. Okay, so we'll try and get you guys done. And uh, Kate, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like you to just sort of share your screen. Uh, Kate Rooks, can you do that? Or whichever, Kate. I've, I've made it open for sharing screens, so whoever can get it <laughs> easier. And I'll I'll be quiet and let you guys go for it. I, I started to make some comments on it, and then I realized it shows up in under my Gmail account, which is probably not appropriate for a town event. So well, um, it it always will. It's it's a Gmail document, it's a Google know. Doc, so everything is going to look that way. I mean, I I don't think you have much choice. <laughs> I know, so I just don't want the. Uh, the title of my email address flying around there. So do you want my, um, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. So um, bit, can you zoom in a little bit? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, no, no. There we go. Oh, that's really big. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. So it sounds like we have the file name, the top demographic information. It looks like people plugged in a title, modernization and accessibility enhancements for the Southampton Council on Aging. Perfect. Um, and I don't know what you guys want me to do. If you want to just go through the narrative and we can, I, I did put some questions on the side or like information that I thought would enhance the um, narrative yeah. a little bit. Um, So maybe we can go through that, but I feel like it looks like someone filled in some of the questions yesterday and I apologize. I couldn't look at it yesterday. Um, I think Christina did some yesterday. I see the stuff in the comments. I guess the question, the, the main question I had was, have we, is there anything that we could include in this overview from this current year that would help support our case? Um, like I know we're that we actually up, we're, we're actually up a little higher and over 60 uh, than we were in 2023. <clears throat> we're now actually 35% according to Lucy. So not, you know how many total people those are? I, I could look for it. Percentage. Are you talking about population people over 60 60 and there's an there's an there are an additional 600 uh residents that are between the age of 50 and 60. do they access the coa no but they will over the next couple uh, you know as we move this program forward so they there's an be. additional 1000 what's the there. total number of dennis of the 60 and over do you have it or yeah i don't i i have it somewhere but i don't have i, I can look for it well, we can fill that in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then the outstanding thing. question would be, so you said that this might be, I just pulled this information from last year's SIG grant. Yep. Right, right. So I think that, you know, because it's the MCOA and the state formula grant really only covers 60 and old, old over, and yeah. we're not looking at building a new senior center with this. I'm not sure the demographics on the 50 to 60 are significant. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, Excuse me, I'm just total, shutting the door. <laughs> the total number is higher though, so. Okay, so we'll, I like we'll I said, I just that. pulled that from the last thing. We'll so I put surrounding cities limit COA access for programming. Uh, this current one can't and expand the COA's capacity to serve older adults, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, the resources environment. I like this. Okay. Um, the only thing is I didn't know if there was any updated information. Yeah. So 512 seniors. So maybe having like one sentence about how like your marketing efforts So it says 512 seniors in 2023, 390 were Southampton residents. Just mention the total. So it where, would be. Where is that, Kate? Because I don't see that. This is a comment. That comment. Un not, okay, they're underneath your the images. Okay, gotcha. So um, I think we could put one sentence in there that just says. There were 400 unduplicated participants in 2022 with 512 and 23. And then maybe we leave out 2024 because it's only half over. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's any value in talking about how the individual programs have grown substantially, like a healthy bones and balance. So it used to be like 10 to 12 people is now around 30. I, and I don't know if that ha brings any value to the grant or not, but that just I feel me. like it. So South, so I feel like it's worth acknowledging that under current initiatives and achievements. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, programs such Continue, uh, you know, yeah, healthy bones, yeah, healthy bones, <laughs> yeah. It yeah. also speaks to the space limitations growing too. Right. Uh, have grown from 10 to 30 participants, but uh, available. You know what? Let's just leave it at that for now. I, and, I, you want to and then you could also say with a waiting list. Yeah, the waiting list part's of, key. With a waiting list due to lack of space to accommodate more than right. Yeah, love it. And just know, like, I just started putting this stuff together, but no, I'm literally not attached to any of this. I just. Yep. Right. Yep. So if there's anything you want to take out or change, just know that I, or if it's not right, like also I was trying to use previous information that I have, but it doesn't mean that it's 100% accurate. Right. Um, so our programming budget is not $1,200. Our, we have zero for programming oh, from the town. Right. So what is the $1,200? What is that from? Expenses. That, oh, expense report. Okay. Right. So that is different than programming because as Janet and said, we get zero. So, so can we say and a $0 programming budget? Yeah. From the town. From, from the, the town. town, from town, the town right. Or from general fund. Um. I put so recent we, grants we, of facilitated creation and expansion of vital positions like the outreach worker. However, lack of funding remains a significant obstacle to address staffing and operational needs. Kind of just acknowledging all the challenges y'all have brought up over the past two years. I did a brief overview of staffing and I, I want to check that this is accurate because this is also from the last SIG grant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, just the part that I mentioned in my note about the volunteer coordinator, that was the only part that needed to be changed. Since the end of April, 2024. That's when she left. So it, I mean, it is open again. So, but so it had closed since the last time. Yeah, it's, so it's still vacant April since 24 is, is fine. Yep. They, yeah. or April 20. So she just resigned last, yes. eight, like a, a month couple ago. weeks ago. Yeah. So that's an accurate statement. Okay. So cool. Um. I put information about outreach worker. I also was curious if there was any information that you thought would be helpful, Kate, about the number of appointments or the number of additional people you've been able to reach out to outside of the COA. I mean, it's up to you. I just, I feel like that's some, you know, yeah. even though there are people not coming to the senior center, it's still work that's being done by the- That'd be under the shine stuff, Kate? Shine and snap and fuel assistance and- and I, and I think we need oh, to also yeah. put in about the housing, the amount of housing costs, our housing conversations you're having with people, which is. Yep. I just got a call just now, Kate, about another housing. Cost. So it is improving. Uh, so I can put it in I as mean, a comment. Increasing. So housing questions and then um, volume of outreach work being done outside of the COA, like physically outside of the COA. Like, I feel like it's important because. While there might not be huge changes to the number of unduplicated customers, 
it doesn't, it, there has been a change in the overall scope of the work or services Absolutely. that you're providing to the town, which yes. I feel like is no small accomplishment and is right. worth, um, because I imagine that next year we might be asking for more money to support the outreach workers. So I think communicating that in a, um, a narrative is not harmful. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'll just put in a note like you and you. I feel like we can do maybe some of this app. Is that's okay if you don't mind filling in some of these comments? Yep. Um, after the meeting, that way we'll have time to get through the whole application. Yep. Um. So I tried to, and I didn't really know how to do this, but I kind of just picked like, okay, this is our current space, and what the limitations are, and then this is how we want to change the space with this grant money to accommodate these changes and again not tied to that format or anything but I didn't know how to like make it flow from one thing to the other um but I didn't know when the the um town hall building was built I... so that was I, I don't know it used to be a primary school I went to primary school there so I'd have to look that one up but it, it got yeah, renovated to be the town hall um there's a plaque right yeah. right above uh, the treasurer's window and it tells you what date that was that it became the town hall um but i don't recall i want yeah, to say in the 1950s no 19 1980s probably 1980s i think 1980s somewhere yeah yeah but it, but it was a primary school <laughs> way back when i was a kid back in the 50s so I well, you that imagine that's... that there were it wasn't really built for full accessibility in the fifties or as a primary. Well, no, nor is it still. So we're right. looking for, for grants so for I that. But... Just... Sorry, Chris. <laughs> yeah, but the the point is, it was never intended to be a senior center. It it was a a school and then a town hall, and it really is just you know the town hall is essentially given the the COA a room to work out of. That's it. Otherwise, you know that's that's all we really have that there's nothing that's been specifically designed to be a senior center really renovated to a town hall while there's been several modifications over the years to address build building wide accessibility concern i mean it's not just the coa right the plaque Many says it was rededicated in 2010 yeah that's what i thought that's when it, that's when the senior center moved out of the basement i think uh, so should we put that the COA? Uh, we could say what? How about this? A room in the town hall was rededicated as the COA in 2010. And I would yes. call it the senior center. We can make those changes, though. Or you rededicated can. as the senior. Uh. uh <laughs> The CO has one room to host all programming. This one room hosts, should I put this, now that we have that in there, should I put this room hosts all programming? Yeah. Yeah. And lacks office space for private meetings with attendees. And I just, just know that I took all of these statements from like previous conversations that we've had. And like, the, I certainly felt like I could have been missing something, but I put the vaulted ceilings in loud volume when programming is well attended creates challenges for those who have hearing impairment. There's an awning outside, but the patio lacks accessible furniture and the current picnic table is inaccessible for attendees with mobility challenges. Many attendees have vocalized a desire to be able to sit outside with the friends in a quieter, more intimate setting. Anything at what? So is it worth what? mentioning? Um, I mean, this only happens like maybe twice a year, but is it worth mentioning that our space, the town hall sometimes needs our space for town hall business? Oh yeah, for but, voting and stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, you could you could say that at least you know, it, annually and well, yeah. Just you wouldn't even have to say how frequently. You could just simply say, these the senior center also serves as the town's um, voting uh, election voting site. Yeah, election site voting center, something like that. Yeah. You wouldn't have yeah. to say whether it's once a year or twice a year. Just mention it's that. Used, right. I'm just going to say consistently during town elections. At which time we have to close the access of the valley. Right. 
center to well it, it it is the designated voting site in town it's the designated election it does yeah make it a little bit stronger i think yeah <clears throat> so used consistently during elections it is the site where people have to it's, come to vote there is no right. other it's the only site in town right only voting site is yes And is utilizing, uh, which results in the COA needing to close programming during elections. Programming during elections, yeah. Um, this one. I'm sure oh. Diane will take words out of this, but you know. <laughs> it's honestly, like I said, <laughs> I am not attached to anything. So I put the vaulted ceiling, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Senior mm -hmm. sees, I said, there's no storage for additional furniture equipment. While well, the town has completed a feasibility to start construct a new senior center, available funding is a significant limiting factor as to when the price, and I saw another date that was 2029. Uh, yeah, that was kind of a guesstimate. Oh, I put that in. Well, no, I said something about approximately five years somewhere. Right. Yeah, it said 2029, which is approximately five years. So, so in optimistically or approximately? Yeah. Well, <laughs> or both. Yeah. <laughs> optimistically. Uh, Kate, when do you turn uh, 60? Because maybe by then. No. <laughs> That's what Lee and I were talking about. We said maybe by the time we're, we're needing a senior center, though, it'll be done. Uh, well, we're going to be more positive than that. Thanks. I am. I so I put in. A, I'll just put in optimistically five years. So you didn't know an inadequacy of the current facility. Development funding is a significant limiting factor, as with everything else. Um. Whatever is purchased. Yeah, I tried to put some. I made changes there. I don't know if it kept that one or not, but yeah. Whatever is purchased will be utilized in the future senior center as well. B point, yes. And I did put that in the um in a lower paragraph about sustainability. Like there's a sustainability yeah, good. section. And yep. I made sure to mention that. COA is yeah. eager to expand. And I also made this paragraph up, but this was based upon like our previous conversation about how like the state really wants us to expand remote virtual programming offerings, but I acknowledge that that's contingent upon the Wi-Fi upgrades, which are supposed to, I, I'm optimistic that those will also happen, right, Chris, this year? This year, meaning fiscal calendar? No. I'm asking Chris because she probably would yeah. know better than me. Yeah, no, no, the the, the Wi-Fi, yes. No, that's, that's going to be happening even within the coming month, I'd say the month of June, where we're going to be working on it. Okay, we, so I'll say we appropriated the money at town meeting, so it's going to happen. And what then I put the FY24 SIG grant generously funded laptops for the outreach coordinator and for virtual programming. Additional items requested in this application. Uh, maybe this is a separate sentence. Additional items requested in this application that have a significant impact on the programming that can be offered. So, again, didn't know if that was like the strongest uh, paragraph, but I did try to just like Create like set do a scene setter. <laughs> a visual. Yeah. Create a visual. Right. Um yes, like seniors like pushing each other aside to be able to get through to the other side of the room. Yes. Um then I thought it might be helpful to um do the next paragraph about like how this grant would help us to improve the use of the COA's available space. Um and I see this comment here, outdoor uh, spaces. Yeah, I just did that right before our meeting, so I didn't have time to figure out where some of that information would work. Um, but it was something try to that- add it, incorporate that information? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure, because I when I was Googling other, I was trying to Google um, if there had been any numbers associated with increasing you know, outdoor space and what that means for a COA. I have not found that. But I just found, um, but I did find that nice little write up. So I thought it was important to uh, maybe tr make make sure we're mentioning some of those things. So you, you certainly, if you want to go in and dice mm -hmm. up this paragraph, I think any supporting information is really helpful. 
Um, I was more concrete about what I put in about like, okay, we need to acknowledge why we're asking for the things that we're asking for. Yep. Um, and the, the only two things that I was a little bit confused about, or like not showing how to share how to present it is I actually wondered if the, cause we were asking for like a lot of different things in a lot of different categories, right? Hearing impairment improvements, outdoor area improvements, a rolling monitor. I just wondered um, if it would be worth like saying that we'll also create an in-kind, like, I wonder if we could just like get a monitor that could be used to like, I wonder if it's worth not asking for this and just like, I mean, it would probably be like 200 something dollars, $250. Unless we put it in for part of the in-kind or something. Well, exactly. Because yeah. I were, I feel like we're asking for a lot of TVs and monitors. Like, I wondered if we asked for one and then said that we will also, as part of like, you know, our goal to improve the space, we will also be installing a monitor to communicate daily programming. I mean, you could do whatever you want. I just felt like... Oh, I think that makes sense. That makes I sense. I feel like the, the actual ask, like the portable TV monitor was very like accessibility focused because you could add in like caption programming. But I felt like this monitor, like I almost didn't know where to put it in the application. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah, but we, <laughs> And I'm like, okay, we... well, I can't really like talk it up too much, right? Because it's not really <laughs> necessarily about... I mean, it's nice to have. Um but in viewing some other um, <clears throat> senior centers, we we saw it as really really integral to to the program. People, everybody who came in, the first thing they did is look at that look at that uh, that monitor, see what's going on, what time it starts, and all that kind of stuff. So then maybe I think we put that then. If you want to ask for it, I think we just need to say like in. Um... Exactly what you just said, Dennis. Is in you know in in. Um... I don't know if we have to call it a sign display or just a monitored display of programs or something. I don't want them to confuse the kind of signs we're talking about. So a small monitor displaying the weekly programming helps to market, improve marketing and outreach. Uh, right. Thinking out loud here. No, yes. And I'm just trying to think about how to put it into a sentence. Like, cause I like the idea that you've seen this in other council on aging's and found that it was like, it was something that it was a best practice that you observe. Right. From right. other senior centers, this best practice. That has been, we have one at Armbrook and you're right. Everyone coming off the elevator would always look and see what that screen said for the day. And they would look for the bad <laughs> jokes. Um, is back by the observed at several uh senior senior centers centers uh would be integral in um communication about future programs daily offerings and janet you said something else too um mm best practices integral and community uh oh um and, and marking help the market and and uh the marketing and outreach for the yeah. the, the programming for the programs um, for marketing and outreach of available programs weekly programs okay. are available for, yeah that's good um, okay, because these initiatives require a one-time purchase of vital equipment implementation could happen very quickly because that that was one thing they asked in the I also tried to make sure that I answered every part of their question. Right. So we put who's involved, COA staff, capacity and work plan to implement this project in yeah. anticipated timeline. So I said once, once the funding is awarded and contracts are issued, which is the language that they use in the RFP, most items could be delivered within a two week time frame, which is what I saw. I went on every website that you listed and that's what they said is that it's a two week time. So I actually feel like that, that was a strong reason why this would be a good project for us is you could implement it very quickly and it would have an immediate uh, benefit to the COA attendees. And then I said, you could install the shed afterwards because we don't, you know, it's not winter right now. So. Right. Right. Um, that could be installed afterwards and it, um, since the furniture would remain outside during the summer months. Like, I felt like that's a really concrete, easy to interpret plant implementation. Mm -hmm. plan. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, communication also made this up. <laughs> um, is there, do you think there's anything that we're missing? Nothing comes to mind at the moment. I know I kind of just, again, I felt like I was making this section up, but um, I felt like we would market it. We could put it in the newsletter, put it on social media. Oh, yeah. I said, maybe we could try to solicit a, um, a Gazette article or something, but I didn't want to promise that, you know, like that would be like, I think that would be a cool Gazette article, right? New outdoor offering at the COA or like, you know, mm -hmm. pollinator gardens at the COA would be kind of cool, but I didn't want to promise that. Right. You know? We have a brand new eager reporter too, so she'd be glad to do anything. I'm sure we wanted her to. <laughs> well, what, maybe it's worth mentioning that then, just to say, well, you know, these these new offerings. Could, you know, I didn't know how to say it without like, like I said, I felt like I was over promising. Because if they don't want to do the article, then I felt like we'd be lying. But well, that's um okay. That's, our intent is our intent is to do do that kind yeah. of you know communication even if the gazette doesn't want it that's yeah well you you could say that the intention is to also um you know make this known in local media outlets or something like that hmm. um, maybe so that a story uh news story could be uh could, uh, reach I, it and it on I really think about these sentences for a long time, so I'm yeah. going to just do this. We can go back. We can expand it and expand because I mean, if you don't have social media, which a lot of people don't, you know, I know we do the mailings, but the mailings aren't monthly, we right? Right, right. So, I mean, I think maybe so the, I reach, reach so the print, print media, I think, will be helpful for some that you know still right, rely on the point. Gazette, you know. Yeah, individuals who may not have access to social <laughs> media. Expanding awareness as much as possible. Like, okay, well, I feel like that's a lot of different ways to communicate okay. new furniture. <laughs> 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 Where's you know? the, I'm just trying to remember with the loop, the the improvement for you know for those that are hearing impaired and be do is that is that further is that a different section? Yeah, yes. was, the loop is okay mentioned somewhere. Um, I know I said read it. <laughs> so I put here each of these proposed interventions are focused on enhancing program offerings and addressing the unmet needs of the hearing, mobility, or visually impaired attendees. <laughs> Portable loop system will allow attendees with a hearing impairments to be able to actively participate in programming. A portable foldable room divider would create the opportunity to host concurrent indoor programming while reducing noise across the room. Mm -hmm. The addition of, of a portable caption television would expand programs that could be offered and would have a lasting impact at the COA. These interventions will create opportunities for inclusivity for individuals who would otherwise not be able to participate. Okay. COA is being uh, interested in being able to offer. See, I didn't, I didn't know. I wanted to expand on this. So I did maybe it's, this isn't the right spot for that, but it's about the mon the portable monitor. Maybe that needs its like own thing. Cause yeah, they, we got zoom from them last year. So we'll continue with zoom, but it's due to the size and shape of our, and, and, size shape and acoustics of our room or something i mean those right i think that's important to mention actually that we because it should that we received the zoom account from the previous grant and this is how we want to continue um with that this is this is the next step in other words um to really yeah. Building off of last year's. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's something like that. <laughs> which was acquired, so should I say, which was acquired through the last NCOA SIG grant. Yeah, or which was made possible by the last SIG grant or something. Made possible. Love that. Through with 
through viewers like you made it, made it, made it, <laughs> made it possible through the last MCY cigarette. Um, uh, portable screen or television would enable captioned programs to or programs to be captioned. So is the intention, just and so I position. understand, is the intention to um, caption, like be able to caption programs that are happening right there, or is it more for people who are not there? Oh, I think the caption is for both because the captioning helps with both, I think. Okay, yeah. so the idea would be you would be able to have this portable television screen I, I i actually think that it help, helps your accessibility case that the intention is to be able to caption programs that are happening in person too right yeah i yeah. mean we do that at smith we we offer it for you know we always have somebody doing video recording oh and then i was asking about the camera because i mean they do make portable cameras that are like on a stand which we got last year. We, so you we, have a, okay. We, we, so we could say that portable television, real time. Utilizing a camera. So was acquired also. Um. I, I do you think it's important to say, and this is a just a curiosity question. Do you think it's important to say that like why portability is important? Or like I mean kind of it has to do with the size and shape of the room, which makes a wall mounted TV that we have not the best answer. So I wonder if that's worth effective. saying in like one sentence. Like um due to or the, because of how flexibly the space is already uh, used. Too many, too many words. How about uh, a portable television allows for flexibility or something like that, you know? Uh, it allows for greater flexibility in reaching an at-home audience or, or the intended audience. Yep. And when able programs to be captioned real time, you do it. I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't think yeah, I think I'd that. leave out that camera because if it's like they're going to say, well, you got the camera last year. Why didn't you use it? Why'd you ask for it if you didn't use it yet? Yeah, I think I, this is fine. So I then mean, uh, didn't say we didn't use it, Chris. I know, but it can, can lead to that impression. And then you, yes, you're yes. giving too much information, I think, can yeah, cause other problems sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we can ax any of this out. I doesn't matter to me. So I said, OK, we talked about that. Um, we talked about communications. So the only thing is like, do we need to, like, I feel like measuring impacts and outcomes. So I felt like we went through a lot of the impacts and outcomes. Like this is a very simple paragraph. So that was my only question is like, do we need to make that last paragraph, like a bullet point? Like these are the things that we're asking for and then move some of the narrative about expected impacts and outcomes down here because well, I feel like we're answering it. It's just not all being answered within number three. I think we're pretty weak on the data, how you're going to date, find data and track and measure. I think that we basically have just one, the COA will measure outcomes, but that's a really generalized statement. Do you think we need how? something more specific? How how to do it, right? How we'll do it. Well, I mean, they're, asking, said, they're asking for um, that, right? How will yeah. you How will you track and measure? And we say, well, we're tracking and measure. We'll do in, you know, socialization, but how? You know, yeah, I, I, I agree that this was like, how could I said, how can this be measured? I actually didn't know because, um, yeah. So, any thoughts, Dennis, on how to measure? Don't, 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 don't you, have, don't you have metrics coming in from when they sign in at the TV screen as they enter? Yeah, we have met those metrics. I think you need to state that and it can be added to the added to the metrics of, of, of during sign in or whatever. You just you just need to give some indication of how you're going to do that, because I don't feel so like that's... metrics include tracking attendance, program utilization and participant feedback. 
Data will be collected through feedback forms. So should we say through attendance records, feedback forms and satisfaction surveys? Um, okay, that's good. How else, how else do we do it? Do we do anything else? Uh, I think because the zoo, the only other thing you could say really is if, it, you know, because you're trying to expand to virtual programming, that would be a new metric. The only thing is I didn't want to say that we haven't been doing that already. Kind of what Chris was saying. Um, So these are kind I'm of trying, like I'm trying to link to what what, what we're purchasing outcomes. new measures, you know, and I'm having a hard time. Yeah. Well, why don't we? Maybe that's a good follow up question. So I'll just say, I mean, it's kind of already here. So maybe expand. And that could be a follow up because I know we're, we're running slim on time. Um, and then I wanted to say, so again, made this pair. I feel like I made a lot of this up, but I said, while addressing the immediate need, project lays groundwork for long term sustainability by inlining enhancement, enhancements with future plans for the future future COA, which will hopefully be constructed around 2020, 2020, 2029. Um, continuation will rely on ongoing grant seeking efforts. Thank you, MCOA engagement, promotion of available programming and continuing to strengthen community partnerships to ensure continued access and service quality. Mm. That was a BS paragraph, but I feel like it's okay. Yeah. We, we've a couple of times talked about senior centers and most of the time COA. Is there a reason we should keep keep it all one or is it okay to sometimes say senior center and sometimes COA. I try to use COA as consistently as possible because it's Yeah, I think you should room. stay with stick with one. I mean, this is going to the MCOA, right? So it's not as though they won't know what we're talking about, right? I know, but the I mean it is to continue improvement within the senior center. It's the physical body of I agree. that. Room that's that why I'm asking focusing. the question. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. I'm supporting your question or your mm -hmm. yeah, inquiry. So I mean, the COA is kind of the overlying, but if we're talking about the room, it's the senior center. So, so but what is the new facility going to be constructed as a senior center? Yes. yes. New futures. Yeah. I mean, it may be an older adult activity center, but I mean, it'll be a senior center or something center. So do we need to say pending adequate funding or do we just leave it constructed around 2029? Yeah. That's, I feel that's like that's true. obvious, which will, <laughs> of course, I feel like that's like almost uh, stated. That can, can we put a cross your fingers emoji there? No. <laughs> you did say hopefully. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, continuation beyond the screen period. We'll rely on you. Okay. So how do you document pra best practices? This was like another thing I wanted to ask because the, I mean, we said previously we wanted to measure additional unduplicated customers, but it seems like we haven't been able to like really achieve that through this most recent grant period. And are you still planning on doing the mailing? Oh yeah, the um, Kate has been putting you know the final touches on. We basically just need to print the um, welcome packet and the brochures. But yes, we'll be doing a big mailing shortly. I feel like it's worth if I want to go back and just say like the if I haven't already, I was thinking about this a lot yesterday or Saturday, like it's almost impossible to measure the expected outcomes from this year because the work is still ongoing. And if I, if I didn't, mm -hmm. did I say that? Yes, very true. Um, Let's see here. So, so it's, um, it's premature. Yes. It, so I'll just say, I'm going to acknowledge, I'm going to put, I will figure this out. Difficulty with managing or uh, interpreting data from or benefits from some outreach activities. 
Mm -hmm. due to work being ongoing so as long as you agree that we should include something about that i kind of mm -hmm. felt like it's impo important to say like okay we're getting this mailing out by june but it doesn't mean that it's going to create an increase in unduplicated customers by this fiscal year right, right. Like we might not see that full benefit for i don't know a year two years or something like that and i feel like we should mention that mm, okay okay hey, quick, quick, have a quick question on the um you know the my center thing that we all sign in on does that have other programming and other data collection tracking possibilities that we aren't using? Are there other programs on that that we might that we aren't taking full advantage of that might help us with measurement of anything or or no? I'm I'm sure there is. <laughs> um, there was that there's actually an upcoming um training for some new features they're rolling out. Um, that okay. I might try to at least pop yeah, on, just, but yeah, just a future future thought, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but no, I, think one, I, I I would I would never claim we're using it to its full advantage. One thing you could you do that I think about every time I sign is you could add more you could add more categories to to what's already on there. Mm -hmm. and gets and get specific about it. I mean, maybe you're going for a meeting, but it's a meeting. But I don't. You, there are other ways to get more data, but you have to add more categories. Yep. Yeah. 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 You yep. do a Google survey tracking. or something like that. Like I did for, I mean, it's just hard because people don't fill out surveys, but you know, that could they be don't. another way to try to um, solicit feedback or at least like it was hard for me to say that people are asking for this loop system or asking for the gardening because I, I, I was taking like anecdotal information. Yeah. But, like, but I have like, had it would be helpful to have like, okay, uh, through data collection from 2023, 2024, blank number of people asked for or vocalized concerns about difficulty hearing within the council on aging or something like that. Like it was very. Um... So, Kate, just as a couple examples. So I've had, I've had concerns expressed from members of the um, senior center that couldn't hear things clearly because of the acoustics or, you know, we had somebody come in and talk about um, the best sitcoms for the last, you know, 50 years and had there been, and they, and people complained that they couldn't under, understand what was being said, but if there was closed captioning. So there has been feedback received and that's just one person, me, that have heard those comments. So I think that um, there have probably been other people that have shared that and not in a formal survey but in uh, anecdotal comments after certain events i don't know if that helps yeah. i think we mentioned that i mean in okay. the um many attendees have vocalized the desire to be able to sit okay. outside with friends in a quiet intimate setting um vaulted ceilings and loud volume when programming as well attending creates challenges right. for those uh so i don't know if we need to say I mean, I'm just saying we don't have surveys that people have answered, but we have comments that have been captured by the right. state. You know, yeah. So you've got you've got right. anecdotal data, right. right? Informally collected, or you know, I mean, you you and we may yeah. not be able to. We we can do a better job measuring it moving forward, right? Yeah. Oh, and this is not a criticism. It it just was hard for me to be really specific. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. But I'm well, just saying we, we didn't make this up. I mean, we did get <laughs> feedback from. Oh, but, I, but I think if you wanted to add a sentence, though, you could say something like informal anecdotal data, you know, reveals that, you know, acoustics yeah. in the in the room are, are a problem or something like that. We've actually moved one of our classes due to requests because of acoustics and not being yep. able to hear the instructor. Really? For one oh, of okay. our weekly so also difficulty hearing instructors or uh so kate desanto did you go upstairs or where no to the select boardroom next door um okay. that's probably not much better <laughs> no but, it but it's, it's it we don't have like the phone or the people coming in and asking questions at the front desk it's just it's shocking how much the sound even minor just travels across the room okay. um and that's specific to our mindful yoga class so it's mm -hmm. meant to be quiet and and I will say too, the air vents where they're located are extremely loud. So if we have that as a background noise as well, it's hard to mm -hmm. for some folks in the 
instructor and the instructor specifically has requested um the separate anecdotal. space because of it so uh i think that's important to say an anecdotal over regarding difficulty hearing instructors um viewing screens or viewing viewing the that, that's what I'm trying to get to the closed caption. Hearing, things. hearing, or seeing instructors. Uh, high levels of ambient noise from air. What did you say, Kate? From air conditioning or ventilation? Yeah. Yeah, from the... um. Because they're located on the ceiling, so the HVAC turns on, it gets very loud. I feel like that's specific enough. Yeah, um, yeah. that's good enough. Uh, high levels, in Vietnam. Uh, or challenges nope. with hearing others when speaking. I almost want to say like have contributed to this request or like who have are is why we're asking for these things. You know right. what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna think about it. So yeah, I feel like we can we can still do some final edits. So let's let's see if we can yeah. keep on moving this along a little bit. I'm trying. I know you're doing great. <laughs> okay. Um so if you have any other suggestions about data collection, great. And then I said, this is a one, to, I just said that the, we're gonna use this information to build on a foundation for the future. I thought this last question was very, um, continue access and service. I feel like there's so much that you're doing that just is like a work in progress. And I feel like, right. I feel like that's really exciting. At least from my perspective, it's really exciting to see all the great work that you're doing. Um, it's just hard to like say it without sounding like self-serving. <laughs> we are awesome. <laughs> okay. And best practices, same thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to document best practices because it's literally, you know, it's so concrete, right? It's a hearing loop. It's furniture. So if you have any suggestions for improvements about this, I said successful programming models, outreach strategies, accessibility improvements, uh, number of attendees reached will continue to be measured. Uh, this documentation will inform future initiatives and foster continuous improvement. Kind of generic statement, but. Um, yeah, and then the beginning of the conclusion, you know, it gets back to what we were talking about before, you know, the enhancement of Southampton's Council of Aging Facilities. It's really the senior center facilities. It's not Southampton, the Council of Aging. Southampton Senior Center. <laughs> yeah. We can get rid of facilities. I would say investing in expanding somehow because it is expanding the senior center out, out the door. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how you off the top of my head. While we're talking for a sec, Chris Manson, can you hang in there for a few more minutes? Uh-huh. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, by leveraging funding, we can create a more inclusive and supportive environment, uh, ensuring they have access to the resources and support necessary to thrive. Also, very generic. If there's anything you want to change in there, just know that I, it was just a quick wrap up. Mm -hmm. Good job. Okay. Um, why don't we do a quick review of the budget? Because I just took the information that you had put in that narrative and I tried to group it. Um, but I didn't actually know what you were trying to buy in this first category for the seating. Like if you were actually buying two picnic tables and three tables, or if it was kind of an either or. No, no. it was both. Both. Okay. <laughs> so do you want to try to nail down what I, I mean, because that's obviously yeah. like a huge chunk. I don't know what the overall cost of the tables will end up being for this do we get a more here? specific number you might you might, you, you might put three three accessible outdoor tables with chairs 
And, and what's the price on that, Ted? Yeah, I think we need to ha nail down the price. Yeah. yeah. I, I would go with 600 each. So that's 1800. Yeah. So in the, in the amount. So that'll be 18, 18 plus 1500, $3,300. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Cause it's two picnic tables. So it's 3000 plus 18. So that's going to oh, be 4,800. 4,800. And was there an in kind for this or no? Which is okay. Yeah, we do. We're looking at is this where a thousand dollars in kind? Uh, no, the uh, under the shed, the next item. <clears throat> but I, I think the the friends agreed to do up to fifteen. Oh yeah, yep. I sorry, so, I thought you were talking about something else. Yes. So what was a thousand dollars for the shed? Where was um, it? Says crushed rock and leveling a structure. So is that? Hoping that the uh, highway department will do that for us. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Qu quick one while we're talking. What's the, uh, are we saying day center up above? Is that the some term that they're using? Where day center above? modernization. The day center modernization. Se yeah, Is, no, it's senior center. Senior center modificate modernization. Yeah. There's a couple of places I think where we had day center. So that should come out if we have it elsewhere. Yeah. We'll find it later. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So we said 4,800, 3,000 plus 18. Yes, 4,800. Okay. So this was the quote that you had put in here with the thousand dollars in kind for installation. And then the garden area it was just dependent on. And oh, that was my other question. If this, these amounts included shipping, because I feel like we need to make sure it's the total cost. I don't, yeah, I don't believe so. Um, I think one of the places had free shipping, but like tax on a $1,500 table is, you know. We don't pay taxes, Kate. Perfect. Okay. So then that's going to be. <laughs> that problem solved. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the only thing I didn't know is how many garden beds and what size of what garden beds you guys wanted. We had talked briefly, a couple of us anyways, that maybe we we start with one. Of course, that means then if it, if it is successful, we obviously, the, the grant has come and gone. So um, why don't we, we would have to. We can start with, why don't we start with two then? Yeah. Why don't we start with two, two six footers? Wow. So that would be $800. Right. And then I thought that $100 in kind could be time. Yeah, that's to actually do the work. And I put I increased the amount for gravel soiled and plants a little bit because I thought 175 was a little bit low for two six foot planters. But we're getting two six footers. So that's 300 times two. That's 600 plus 600. the soil, right? 200. Right. Okay. So you we're yeah. going to take this out. Right? I just take that. Yeah. So we right. So this, this becomes 600 in the left column, not 800, right? Right. right. 600 yes. plus the 200, right? In your You're adding over soil here. and gravel for yeah. next to the yeah yeah so it's yep. six three three and two so, so change the change the eight to a six no, no. it's six hundred no it's, it's still eight why gravel you got two beds two hundred six hundred oh I thought the gravel, gravel and the soil and the plants was the in kind sorry got no, it that's when, that's your volunteer when you start digging <laughs> yeah I'm just okay. gonna okay so then uh, all right installation <clears throat> box. Okay. Um, and then I tried to categorize this as in improvements for those with sensory challenges. And then the question would be, I put the television or we have the wall partition, the portable loop system, and then I group the television with the stand into one thing. And that does include shipping or it does include tax and the cost of the stand from eBay, as long as you can get shipping from Amazon. And then my question was, do we do the digital programming display as like an in-kind thing, or do you think we should put that in here? We don't have a quote on it. Um, Hadley just makes it themselves, apparently, in PowerPoint. I know you had shared Canva. Mm -hmm. um, of course, our, our ongoing issue is if, if there would be someone because this obviously needs to be updated um, constantly or it's useless. <laughs> if, if we have someone that's able to do that on an ongoing basis. Um, so I'm, so I'm at least not clear yet. Um, 
of actual programs that might do this? Um, the one thing I will say is that we would sometimes add in flyers for programming. We also used it as like uh, helpful tips and tricks for like seasonal uh, tick safety, whatever, like what, you know, sunscreen, whatever, some like public health information too. Um, and you don't have to change that every day, but it allows for it to like kind of just incorporate more things. But we could we can go back to that if you want. I just couldn't fill in the um yeah the total yeah. amount. Okay. And then the signage, I thought two thousand dollars for a wooden sign was really expensive. Well, that's what they paid for the wooden sign. That's a two sided wooden sign, which is the one that's at Conant Park near East Street. Yeah. So I'm just telling you what the, the price is. So I saw that you got that from Dan LaValley. Um, yeah, yeah. So we can leave the signage in there. Also feel like. I don't know uh, that that's what we're going to go with, but you know. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about that. So if you want to go with that. Okay. So then once you figure out. And I will say the in-kind donation on that would be someone putting the post in the ground. And so I, you know, probably a couple hundred dollars of in-kind because there was no charge to the Parks Commission to install those signs. So, so should I we say $200? Yeah, for in I mean, so I would expect that we wouldn't be treated differently. Okay. So looks like we've got a little bit more to do on the budget. I just want to be mindful of time because we do yeah, have to yes. do a second program here. here. Yep. Okay. Um, so we answered some of these questions. I'll go up and clean out the comments we have a few follow-up things that are still kind of outstanding, like the digital programming display and then some other like things that we highlighted that need a little bit more work. But um, I feel like we're in okay mm -hmm. shape. I mean, it needs to be submitted pretty soon. So yeah, yeah. it goes in, um, what is it? Thursday, Christina? Thursday, Thursday by four. Okay. So let's, let's see if we can, yeah, just get, get this a little bit, you know, like Kate just said, to get that a little bit cleaned up, but then, I think people can go in individually and, you know, you'll see your comments as you're put in there. Every time you put in a comment, your name will appear <clears throat> if you do that. Um, but I'm sure Diana will find some time. I'm, if I ask her, she will uh, make make herself available to do a final review and edit. I don't recall if this had any kind of character or word limits, do they? That was my the next question. I know Kate said that there was better this year than it was previously. It was, it's yeah. a four-page okay. limit. So yeah. Sorry? it's... Four, Four pages. pages yeah. <clears throat> and the budget is a separate page or part of that? Mm, part of that, I thought. Part of it, I think, yeah. So instead okay. of it being like the three full page, yeah. It's similar right. to how it was before, but we're not limited by characters. Okay. Thankfully. but And just remind me, was there a particular font and size that had to be used? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So everything that we're doing now should be in that font so that when we copy it out into a mm -hmm. Word document, right? Mm -hmm. Or when we yeah. copy it into a Word document, export it to a Word document, because that'll be where Christina will cut and paste from to put it in online rather than this Google document. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So yeah. we just be sure that whatever that required font and so forth is, so that we're, you know, that we know that we're within our three page timeline or yes. limit, rather. Yeah. Great. Uh, well, you guys have made a lot of progress. And I have a feeling uh, between uh, whoever, the Cates and Christina and whoever else worked on it this weekend. Did a yeoman's job. So thanks. Thank you, Kate. Yeah. Appreciate Thank it. You. Welcome. The yes. Energizer Bunny over there, as usual. Yes. Both Kates. There must be something about Kate's. I don't know. I it think was they... not me this weekend. It was all her. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, no, I think that's that's come mm -hmm. a long way. So thanks for all that. And we'll, uh, I don't know that we need another group meeting on this at all. I think um, at some point in time, I mean, we can touch base certainly on Wednesday if you want to. Um, yeah. Just, just briefly. If I'd love to know when it gets submitted. Yeah. Yeah. But do you want to, do you want to just touch base on anything or just have everybody yeah, just like that? Yeah. Or just if to have, how about to crunch that, crunch the nut words down too. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about if we say that, you know, everybody chime in by, I don't know, close a business on Wednesday with any, any final thoughts? Um, Is it five o'clock on yeah. Thursday, Christina? Is that when it's due? Four. Um, four o'clock. Yep. Four o'clock. Okay. Thursday. Um, but then I'll I'll ask Diana to go in and, and take a look 
if she can, if she's available, to take mm -hmm. a look at it too. All right. Only but if it goes it, over, I think. But I mean, yeah. She writes any final well. comments and edits. You know, make them online because then you know <laughs> we'll have to get this in on Thursday. Yep. Sure. Okay, so we won't do a meeting, but just chime in, and then if if nobody has anything to say, say I just shoot an email around to all of us saying I'm done. I have nothing more to add. Keep on moving. Okay. okay, so that we don't wait for everybody. Right. All right. Sounds good. All right. With that, I'll let the, the COA disappear on us. Thank you so much, guys, for Thank you. Thank you. joining so in. Bye. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye. Okay. Hey, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for waiting. Hi. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. All righty. So that's okay. We got Got a couple of good good things going here at the same time. That's the way it always is, where there's more than one thing happening at the same time here. So, so I just wanted to share. I think that I passed the news around that obviously we did. Whoops, something just happened. That didn't work. Hang on a minute. Something just went somewhere. Oh goodness gracious! Now what? Stop sharing. That's not what I wanted to share. Let's try something else here. I wanted to find the uh, uh whatever that went to. Historical. I thought that was it. Is that it? No, that's not sharing. Okay, that's not helpful. Never mind. I will find it somewhere unless it disappeared on me. Uh, there it is. Are you looking for the email where they said that we were eligible? Yeah, no, no. I I got the um the actual um screen itself. There we go. I thought I clicked it up. Here it is. So so this was the um the EOI that we put in. So yes, we are one of. 16 uh, entities or towns, I guess, that are going to be eligible for the the full Brune historical subgrant program. And this is basically the EOI where we had put in everything. So when they send it back to us, it looked like this uh, when they sent it back to us. So we have everything that we wrote in there, which is great. Um, and at the time, we had estimated uh, 90,500. And that was basically, um, Christina and I had had a chat with the Hill engineer folks and did the uh, the uh, cost estimate um, from when we had done the original thought about what the repointing might cost us. And they were estimating since 2021 that we should figure in a 12% annual increase in cost. So that's where we came up with all this, this extra money plus a little bit of administrative uh, type cost. So that's kind of where we are. And I just wanted to share the um, the application form too, because I did go back and talk to um, the um, program manager because in the instructions at one point in time, uh, it made it sound like um, there needed to be, uh, gosh, this thing is just not applying by me today. Come on here. Here we go. Hold on a minute. Uh, it made it sound like we might have to go out and get quotations and all that kind of stuff in order to submit the application. So I panicked a little bit and called the person and got a little bit more clarity that, no, we don't have to do that yet. So um, this was the overall um, guidance for the program, which I believe I sent around. So just to reiterate, the application is due in on the 14th of June. Uh, we'll know something by July. And we've got a two-year time period to get it done, which is good. It's not just a one year. It goes into August 26. Um, program goals, I think we had seen in the earlier thing, and they seem to think that we we were okay with that. I don't know about this. Uh, I highlighted three of them that I thought we could probably easily you know, speak to. I don't know about this fourth one about connecting applicants to educational resources. Um, I don't know, maybe that's more their program goal rather than our program goal, I think. So uh, not a big deal. That was just an overview. The eligible applicants, we've already passed that phase. Um, so this was already um, something that we had done. They just wanted to remind us that minimum is 50,000, maximum is 100,000. So we're right in that ballpark. If we stay with the rough budget that we have. Um, it does require all this level of technical views, reviews by the National Park Service and everybody and his brother um, as a <laughs> federal federal program. 
So no surprise there, I guess. But <clears throat> what I wanted to do, so this was the expression of interest selection criteria. We'll skip that because we already went through that. <clears throat> and this was all the eligibility stuff. But where we get down to here is now the full application. So when I talked to the person, um, Shannon Walsh, I believe her name was, um, and I asked about, you know, do we need to go out now and try to get, you know, more, you know, um, specific costing and pro formas and, you know, things like that. I said, there's obviously no time to do a request for bids. And she said, no, 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 that's not important right now. That is something that once the award is given, they actually end up taking a lead apparently in mm -hmm. having to do a federal procurement um, process. So not now, <coughs> excuse me. She said the writing is the most important. <coughs> and of course I lose my voice. <coughs> Hold on two seconds. Oh, sorry. So she said the um the written application is Why really what counts. Water, Chris? <laughs> I will, I will. So you guys read Chris this part. Getting more and more red. <laughs> you read this real real part, but this is where we need to see all these points we have to write to. And I wanted to get a sense, I think, of what do we think we can answer quickly, easily, and where do we think we'll have a hard time? So I'll be back in two seconds. I went there. Um, they did tours this weekend of the police and fire department. And I went there with my son, <laughs> uh, my neighbors, who uh, we actually are walkable distance from both places. So I went there with my neighbors who also have a small child. And we got a full tour of the um, police station. I've never been there before. And I've been living here for 14 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Were there a lot of people attending? No, I mean, there were some, I also, I also shared, they did, I guess they did a video tour of both mm -hmm. buildings. And yep. so I shared that on our social media groups, because I think it is important for people to see, you know, how <laughs> that building is a little outdated for what our current needs are. Yeah, a little, yeah, it's actually shameful. <laughs> it, is, it totally, well, I wanted to be sensitive of, you know, res and respectful of people who might have different opinions. You know, not, you know, not everybody wants to spend the money on it, but, uh, you yeah. know, I was well, glad I got to at least check it out. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm glad you went. Thank you. I'm, I'm chair of the public safety building committee. So, oh, so you're a strong advocate okay. as well. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, um, I'm aware of those, uh, tours and we got a note from the fire chief saying that there had been seven tours and 34 attendees or something like that. So that was good. Yeah. Cool. Well, we were a few of them. It was really good. Good. Yeah. Did you enjoy it, Kate? I met you. Christopher had a good time. It was a very, um, it was, yeah, Christopher and Xander, our neighbor's son, had a fun time. But you could tell, like, the intention of that was to really hammer yeah. in the, the limitations of each facility. And it, like, right. it was very eye-opening. And I didn't actually know that they had done a, a video tour of both places. Yeah. Yeah, so that's on the town website, along with the architect's presentation. That was at public meeting. I think you were, mm -hmm. Dave was in Boston or something, so you were you were home. <laughs> yeah, but, but it, anyway, was so to, this it was is, great to see it. It was great to see good. the space. Glad you went. Good. So anyway, um, this is where we have got to focus our time writing, and obviously the community benefit is the biggest section here, but... Um, is this, I can make this a little bit bigger if we need to, uh, just to see it clearly here. Um, so. Oh, we will support the local economy? Uh, well, let's look at, um, so I think probably the, this part of, you know, meeting the scope and meeting project costs, that's probably not the bigger part. Um, looking at appropriateness, <clears throat> let's just take these little bullet points and, so, Christina, anything you think about here, but it demonstrated that the project is a historic community anchor. I think we can talk about that. Absolutely. Um, the actual needs, probably, uh, most critical needs. I think all of that is something we can probably speak to based on the Hill Engineer Report, right? Um, some of this, yeah, I think we could call it part of the pre pre-planning phase of having had that envelope study done um absolutely yeah yeah um 
structurally sound, able to be stabilized. D definitely, Absolutely. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Easily accessible. Well, the parking lot's easily accessible. Getting into the building is not so easily accessible. <laughs> I think walking, it's, I mean, it's walkable and you can yeah. drive there. Yeah. It's just that you can't go in the front steps of the building. Not that anybody goes in there anymore, but um, so, yeah, I mean, technically, I think it is. I think so. All of that didn't bother me too much. I mean, I think we can spin some narrative around that. But then we got to get down into this, the bigger part here, which hold in two seconds. Screw it down here. Come on. Uh, screen. Come on. See, there we go. OK. Uh, Where to go? Yep. So how the funds will support the local economy? Is it projected, including the comprehensive or master planning? Does it align with organizational strategic plans, statewide initiatives? Uh, demonstrate or uh, document appropriate community support? Will it meet a defined community need and increase cultural programming in the community? So that's going to be a little bit more challenging <clears throat> probably to write to. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, that's is where this I don't competitive? know. Well, I think so. I mean, we're one of 16. So, yeah, I don't know how many they give out. Uh, probably not more than I'd say maybe half a dozen if we're lucky. You know. I guess the one thing I'll say is that the, the the local economy inevitably is going to need police and fire services or police services. Right. And yeah. it is the historic town hall. So regardless of the plan to build a public safety complex, the need to preserve that location remains right like that would even if they the police were to move out of that building it would still remain a historic site right yes yeah, right. so within within the historic district the center uh, the center um historic district so m one of my questions was going to be are you approaching it as though uh it is the police station is that i mean that obviously at, at, without without projecting to the future when we'll be moving out, do we? Uh, mm -hmm. Is it written as though it is the police station in the historic building? Oh, mm -hmm. good point. I think we probably ought to, because even so, I mean, we're we're easily five years out in terms of a new police station. I would think, right? Um, you know, so. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we'd have to focus on that in terms of its main use right now. Um, you know, having, you know, the, the main town hall itself got converted over to the other one, what, 15 or so years ago. But, you know, it has remained to be the uh, the police station. So, yeah. And it um, is, is there, like, a the... historical summary of that building. Like, is yeah. that available somewhere? Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it is. Yes. Yeah, if, Christina, if someone right. has like a link to that, I'd love to read it. Mm -hmm. Yep, we've got the information from the MACRIS, right? From the state. Yes, yes. I'm just trying to think. Uh, who to whom did Bob Kozib send that? Uh, do, you, do you have a copy of it, Chris? I must have it too. I'll just have to search for I'll, it. I'll take a look. I, you know where where there is there's actually a huge notebook, a huge bound. Macris book in Scott's office. I saw the other day. So yeah. the all of the so it's, town it's all, in there. All of the town historical properties are listed in there. Apparently, I don't know when. I didn't look at the date on it when it was done, but I know I <laughs> sent it to Diana uh, because oh. Bob had referenced specifically what uh, what its listing is. So I oh yeah and okay. I probably cc'd you, Chris. Yeah, I'll take a look. I probably have it too. Yeah, I'll take a look. Yes, you did send it to Diana. Okay, we'll we'll pass that around. Yep, absolutely. And um, there may be further, like in Ted's book, there might be something about it also. So mm -hmm. I can keep looking for further. Yep. yep. Um. So is it included in the master planning comprehensive? I think we'd have to look at the. Whoops, we lost Kate. <laughs> Yes, it is in that uh, it, it is the directive to uh, the historical section to maintain historic structures. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the goals and strategies, if I remember correctly. So yeah. Um, um, I th yeah, so I think we'd have to speak to that through the master plan. That's probably the main document, you know. Oh. 
We lost her. <laughs> um, what is, let's say I'm trying to decipher, uh, discern organization strategic plan. Does yeah. the project align? What what does that mean? Can you translate that for me? Uh, uh, does organization uh, organization strategic plan? Oh, it says, or does the project align? So we focus yeah. on the master plan? <clears throat> I think focus on the master plan. Hi, Kate. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My my computer, my work computer just like turned off. It must have like overheated or something. Oh, uh, could be. <laughs> Too much work there. So, yeah. So we, we do have stuff in the, uh, there's a whole chapter on historical and cultural resources in the master plan. So uh, both Chris and I are on the master plan committee too. So we can pull some stuff from there on that second bullet. Um, and does it align with an organization strategic plan? Uh, well, organization-wide, it would be, I mean, it, it would be the town of Southampton as the organization or- Right. Would there be a state, would there be a state historical commission or a regional historical commission that would have some sort of charter or mission about maintaining historical buildings in general like does it have to be just southampton or yeah and I, i'm a little bit out of my wheelhouse with this particular grant but i mean does like the state have a, a section of their website or a group of people that their job is to to make sure that historical buildings are maintained yeah there certainly is go ahead chris I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I don't because uh, I don't think like mass historic <clears throat> um, or it, I don't think there's anyone that oversees the, the maintenance. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it, it, as long as essentially historic buildings can be even let go. I mean, look at, look at the firehouse, the, the fire station, that's a historic <laughs> building and that's in terrible repair. And so I don't think there's any, anything that um, prescribes maintenance okay. Um, okay. On, on a state or historic level. They are, um, they are listed of course on MACRIS and the national register, but it, it doesn't, that just states that they're historic structures. It does not, um, uh, call call for their maintenance. Okay, okay. Because they can even be torn down. <clears throat> yeah, well, yeah, can. yeah. So I think in the the second bullet, I mean, I think we can write mostly toward the master plan. I mean, that's where the bulk of the information is that we can pull and not worry so much about an organization strategic plan. Um, just focus on that. Now, document appropriate community support. Well. <laughs> Community support for the fire station and the police station, um, but I don't know if we can talk about community support about this yet. So we'd have to think about that one. Um, you know, re repointing it. I mean, it's I'm sure people people fired up about septic or sewer systems <laughs> along the bike path, right? It's like hard to quantify. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But to maintain, I mean, it is one of, let's see, do, do you remember when the Larrabee School was built? Oh, uh, well, I went there in the 50s, so. Yeah, it has that. to be early. So, so it, it, well, I'm assuming that that is, would be considered a historic building, a historic structure, but the church and the old town hall are the only structurally um sound or, or the buildings that have retained their structural integrity within the the center historic district mm -hmm. so we don't i mean since that is our our yeah. primary historic district in town there are very few municipal or uh municipal public buildings there and that is the the primary one so as far as community support I, I it's, there's an argument to be made that it's it is sort of a, a centerpiece for our historic district it's the only municipal building left within the historic district okay. oh. yeah 
Okay. Let's not forget that then. <laughs> Good argument. <laughs> not left that exists. Well, the that Grange, exists. Yeah, the Grange was is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fire station is uh has no no historic integrity left to it because of the mod modification. So anyway, that's yeah. that's my yeah. thinking. Yeah. Yeah, we might have to think through that one a little bit more if we had to do something else for, yeah. I mean, we haven't really had much discussion about, you know, what could be a possible future use of the old town hall. Um, so that would be a challenge. Um, completion needed could define community need. Yeah, I mean, I think so. We've got to keep it functional so that the police can function in there yeah. still at least, yeah. right? I mean, Absolutely. that's the minimum. Mm -hmm. You know, and for... For eons, it served the purpose as a town hall, so it used to be, you know, a major centerpiece in town. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess what we we outgrew the town hall, and that's why we decided to move to Larrabee. Why did we decide to even move to Larrabee? Yes, we outgrew it. I, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Where was the police station before? In the basement. So they've just expanded the. The addition was put onto the old town hall in 1970, and the police were just downstairs. And when the um, town hall vacated, they just um, migrated up to the uh, upstairs. They've just in, um, expanded themselves uh, little by little up to the ground floor, and so uh, now they now they in, uh, inhabit the whole. Well, they don't, they, yes, they even up on the third floor, they have storage rooms, locked, locked storage rooms. So they use mm -hmm. the whole thing. Interesting. So uh, does the project, when you're doing, does the project address the most critical building needs? Well, yes, of course, that's structural maintenance. Critical building needs. The, the, what is the risk if this work is not done? Like, are there, that's the other thing that might be worth kind of alluding to a little bit is like, if this work does not move forward, is there a risk that the facility would become more compromised? Oh, yes. Uh, sure. Sure. This is basic, this is basic uh, preservation of, of the building. Um, it's, it's basic maintenance, essentially that's been okay. let, let go far too long it's um the uh some of the areas of deterioration are pretty significant and we have that in that report that you're that i'm sorry the hill engineers yes uh-huh yeah okay yeah I, I would love to see that report because i'd love to pull some like I think that would yeah. help our narrative and help us to get some points if we, you know, and I, I, sure. I love doing stuff like that. So if you want to share that with me, I'd love to read it. Chris, do you want, well, you, you have it online, uh, a digital yep. copy now, right? Okay. Yeah, I can send it around. Yep, absolutely. I was yep. trying to find it, but, but then my laptop crapped out. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. No, I think it's good. So we can, we can do that. Um, I'm uh, happy to do it too. I just don't have your email address. So yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll share all that information around. And yeah, probably, um, I don't know, did you, when I stepped out for a second, did you get this last bullet about um, increased cultural programming in the community? <clears throat> I mean, that's the that's the real future, which someday, Kate, if you ever have a chance, we'd have to give you a tour of the upstairs of Town Hall, the, up, the old Town Hall. <laughs> Is it Beautiful. the one that with all the wooden paneling? Up above the police station. So up above where police station, town hall, and then there's another floor up above. Nice stage. Uh -oh. So oh, future. see, I thought that that was their like, okay. I So I only went into like their conference room, which is like a, the training area. Yes. Right. Yeah. So that, um, that floor, it used to be, there used to be a large auditorium there. And it was, uh, there was a ceiling put in, in 1960 to, and the building, the auditorium was chopped up into small offices. <clears throat> so the original structure had, the front section was two stories with a total of four offices. 
And then the bulk of the building was an auditorium with a stage and a balcony. And there used to, it was a basketball court and uh, it had many, many uses, graduations and um, town meetings, uh, theater performances and so forth. So it was at, when it was, uh, before it was altered in the six, in 1960, it was um, the, the primary um, uh, community building in town. Right. Yeah. In a way, I still feel like we don't have something like, I mean, we have the town hall, but it's, you yeah. know, the individual meeting spaces are pretty small. So it sure. almost feels like we need, we need that back. <laughs> we do need it back and we need we to have a uh, second floor ripped out so that it becomes a, a, a large uh, two story auditorium again. It would be, it would be beautiful if it was restored. Yeah. No, if it could be restored back to the way it was, I mean, my, my dad, I remember my dad used to talk about playing basketball in there mm -hmm. when he was in in high school. I mean, it was it was like the community center of the time. Yes, it was. and it you know then graduated into many other municipal uses too. But um, yeah, if we could ever find somebody with deep pockets to come in and restore it, like they're doing with all these old mill fronts up in East Hampton, it would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why the the importance of doing this outside maintenance Kate you know just in terms of you know putting in the the repointing in the bricks just to hold the the structure together um so that we can you know hopefully it someday do something with the interior yet again um it would be a gorgeous uh, place for all sorts of reasons so I don't know if we can you know depending on how how much we end up writing here um you know it might be interesting Christina to talk a little bit about some of that past history that you just mentioned you know how yeah. it used to be how it used to be and how, you know, there could be a, a future, you know, future vision, you know, now that it's not right. used for right. Excuse me, those kinds well, of you know, you could say in 10 years, we hope to have a new public safety complex to support the needs of the building. And, you know, this, yeah, like exactly what you said, because I, I mean, this is all learning for me too. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. so I feel like that's, that's, comp you know, it's almost like the compelling part of the argument is, you know, making it back into the, right now, there is no real community hub mm -hmm. area, community building in Southampton. I mean, no. there's Norris, but that's very limited. There's the town hall, which is also very limited. Um, and yeah, maybe mentioning about how people used to, re you know, reminisce about being able to play basketball there and like, you know, gra participate in graduations. Like, I think that all those things are not only interesting, but also support the argument about why it's important to preserve it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And, and the whole, whole thing about, you know, arts and arts and theater possibilities in the future stuff too. So. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, you can see it as like a youth center or like, you know, youth yeah. programming too. Yeah. You know, no, that, that it's, definitely it's is. Right. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Just interrupt. Well, I'm just looking at um, the master plan. And one of the strategies is develop a plan for the future use of municipally owned historic properties, such as Old Town Hall and Fire Station. Um, well, it's in there. So That's good. It's very specific to the um, to the master plan. Mm -hmm. Great. Work to determine the highest best use for these properties and how to repurpose the buildings while keeping historical character intact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a point that could be made too. It's in the master plan programming that this this structure needs to be maintained to keep the historical character intact. Right. I mean, that's an argument for um, for this, I think, as well. But anyway, um, yeah, that's so a minor think, point, but they are yeah. they are specific to the master plan. Right. Yeah. So I think you know at this point, you know, without spending much more time today but yeah. i think budget wise i'm feeling relatively okay with what we put out there i mean i think yeah. that ninety thousand dollar figure is believable i think you know we can we can provide more narrative to it if we need to um but you know the, the fact that we didn't have to go out for any quotations and so forth makes me feel all good about that so if we can really just kind of focus on these these sections i think that will be what we need to do i need to double check i don't recall seeing anything I'll go back and double check it in terms of uh, his umpteen million things here, the standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it told us anything about how many pages or any of that. I think it's just a free flowing. Am I wrong on that? I don't know. Maybe. Hang on. 
No, there's a link. No, EOI. Hmm. I'll go back in and just double check if this if there was a the actual application form. I think I thought there was. She said but... Shannon said she was going to send it out. Oh, that's but... it. That's right. I don't. I you have you seen that yet? No, I have not. I have not. So I will double check on that. That's you're correct. She did say that they were getting it together and putting out the thing online, and it was not out. Actually, last week I looked, it wasn't out. So I will check again on that. So there is She's an application. She's not much time to get these applications. I right? know. They really are not being very generous about this. So this is going to be a fast ride <laughs> right here. But <clears throat> but I think we can, um, you know, let me let me see if I can pull that together. So action items. We'll get around the um, the Hill Engineer report and the um, whatever we can find out of the Macris link or the Macris link to Kate. So she has that. Um mm -hmm. Christina, you've got the focus on the master plan. So why don't you sort of, you know, you've got that historical knowledge from the master plan too, if you want to start tackling a little bit of that thought. Okay. Yeah. Um, sure. But then- So, um, so uh, I don't know what your process is here. Is there usually one person in the grant committee that takes on a project and does the bulk of the work and then they're- we, uh, Yeah, we've kind of divided it up over time. So usually- <laughs> Sometimes we just take sections of a grant application and everybody kind of take a section and work on it um, or whatever. So we kind of all work together. So usually what we do, once we have a real application form to work with and we know what the questions are uh, that we have to do online, is we usually put it in a Google, a shared document. So then we can all start writing our thoughts down and, and just you know start putting some thoughts together, kind of like what you saw Kate go through today. Today was like the ending process really of, of what the committee had come through um, for the COA one, but for people to put out some of their thoughts and comments and then get together for a little bit of a group strategy writing session, talking it through, does it make sense kind of thing. So probably given our time frame, we need another meeting, you know, within a week or something just to see where we could go with this stuff. But trying to see for what the questions are first and then maybe assign tasks for, you know, who could, you know, who could feel like they could research and or write to certain ones. Um, mm -hmm. Diana, I think we can pull her back in. She's been away, obviously, but she's back now. Uh, and so she said she'd be glad to help Howard. She's part of the committee. Um, and so um, I definitely would like her input on that too, um, since she helped with the EOI as well, so. Right. And um, you mentioned a subgroup from Historical and we have a meeting tomorrow night. <clears throat> okay, um, great. So um, I'm going to bring it up at that. And um, uh, do you, without without actually having the application in hand too, yeah. it's kind of fun to know yeah. what kind of, how, how much or how it can be organized. So I'll yeah. just, I'll put it out there and see if anybody wants to work on it. Yeah, it may, that'd it'll be, be great. There. Because if there were just even, you know, you know, another person to work with you or something from historical, I mean, you know, you guys could work, you know, together without having to call a meeting or any of that kind of stuff, just a, you know, a mini working group kind of thing. Um, I will look where, as soon as we're done here, I will get back online or, or contact Shannon and see if the uh, application is out there and then I'll pass it around. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But let's, let's assume, so you guys are meeting tomorrow night, Christina. Um, yes. All right. So then Monday's a holiday. Could we maybe try to meet Tuesday the 28th just to check in and see where things are? I could do the, oh, uh, I could do two o'clock. Yeah. I could also, ugh. I would <laughs> say two o'clock. I'm <laughs> just looking at my schedule. I would say two o'clock if possible. Could okay. that work for you, Chris? Oh, so would it just be this small group with that yeah. one I jumped into? Okay, so um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, it would just uh, it would just be this. We we would be done with that other grant, so we'd be focusing on this. So if there's somebody else from historical that would join you, um, okay, we can do that. But I can set up a, a Zoom meeting for the 28th at um, two o'clock, huh? Yep. Okay, and is someone going to put it into a Google document? Yeah, once I find it, <laughs> once once okay. they put it out. <laughs> yeah, so I will I will note that i'll let you all know today whether it's already out or what the heck they're doing with it because that's a little strange that they haven't sent that around i thought shannon would have sent it to me personally but i definitely haven't seen it so um we'll we'll get that together and we'll put it in a in a shared document okay 
and okay. it, it's okay for me to um, uh, share the um, the um, expression of interest with yep. the historical commission, so they Absolutely. have that much. Yeah, no, that would be great. In fact, if you could, you know, share it around email wise or print it out, whichever. But yeah, the one that I um, brought up here, I can send it back to you as an email if you want. Well, I think I have it um, uh, in the email that you, I'm sure I do because I looked at it. So I'll just forward okay. that tonight and maybe okay. the members will have a chance to look at it before yeah. coming. Okay, that's good. That's good because I think the way that the the group came back to us, I mean, they had it kind of laid out nicely as I showed it here that made sense to read easier, I think. So Yeah, that would be good to get any of the commission's comments on it. Sure. That'd so, um, Chris, I know that I sent the Macris information um, and the Hill report around, and I think both to Diana. You, it, you have both of those. I'm just wondering uh, if I should go back and look for them. No, uh, let me let me look. I probably have them, and I'll, if I don't, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. I can put my email in the chat, too. I'll do it right now. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. That way, yeah, I love, and I appreciate you teaching me about a little bit more about this building because it helps me to think about what I'll write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Kate does a lot of the research for us and is eager to dig into those kinds of things. So that'll be good, well, I, good I, new I learning too. Diane, I took Diana upstairs uh, to give her an idea <laughs> of what the, the, what the original building looks like like yeah. and that I, I think that's very useful is that something yeah. i should suggest that kate and i do yeah that would be good if you got some okay, time kate. is there are there are there attachments for this application don't believe so are there well we that's had kind some of photos. a bummer because it'd be cool if there was like pictures of it yeah, maybe like know, an there, old picture there were some photos for the eoi there were exterior photos that we had to put in so those went but nothing Nothing new that I'm aware of, but maybe we could take something from the interior. That might, might be a bad, not be a bad idea. But and so, Chris, can you um, you have the photograph of the original building? The, yes. Uh, the, um, can you send that to Kate sure. too? Um, sure. We'll sure. Do. Yep. No, I'll pass them around. That's great. Um, I appreciate it. Yep. And um, so maybe we can find a date. I know we've got Memorial Day weekend coming up here, but um, unless anybody was available. Friday or something, we'd have to wait until early next week to, you know, have have a little tour. But Kate, I think it would be great. In fact, I wouldn't mind going up again and just taking a look at it myself. Um, yeah, no worries. I mean, I, I I've learned a lot about it even just from hearing you talk about it. But I'm ha I mean, I'm happy to go there. And yeah. also, like, I'm all, I'm also cognizant of the time limitations with this mm -hmm. particular grant. And I, you know, I don't think that, you know, well, if we have to spend our time really judiciously then i'm fine with uh, just like you know having the visual <laughs> yeah but but it's good I, you know the other option would be um well i would say after the parade on monday maybe or something like that or you know whatever or sometime i don't know when your work schedule kate your what time do you ever get home um it depends this these next few weeks are a little wonky because i'm like half working half i'm supposed to be half off but it hasn't happened yet so this just ended on the 17th um, and I'm supposed to go to halftime, but yeah, there's some complicated ne union negotiations that are happening. So it's kind of tough. Um, but yeah, so we I will, um, I'll, I'll be happy to at least, you know, get started on this as soon as we can. I um, would love to wrap up this COA grant as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think they, that's pretty much, that needs to be, they need to finish this now. You've done your yeoman's job on that. They, they need, need to, to help. <laughs> they they need to pull it together. So they they really do. So don't don't spend a lot of time on that anymore. Some final comments. Oh, I maybe, won't. But... I can't. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um. So why don't I mean if you guys? I'm not around this weekend. I'm I'm photographing the mass sheep and wool craft fair. So, nice. but if if you were happening, if Kate, if you were around at all on Saturday or Sunday or something, I mean, I don't know. With Christina, you guys could just work out a you know, an hour to run down and take a look at the place upstairs. It would be great, but it's up to you. I can be fairly right. flexible. Um, just, I do, you know, Kate, I just think seeing the, what the original structure was, it, it could take just 10 minutes to, to okay. go. And sure. You said you were close by. So I am um, very close by. Yep. 
um, I can make a, an arrangement. Well, the chief is gone, um, but I can arrange make an arrangement with somebody to get into the building and go upstairs. So, um, okay. um, Let's figure out when we can do that. Um, uh, let's see, will you, Chris, will you just send me um, Kate's email address and sure. we can okay. figure it out? <laughs> we'll do, yep. Okay. All I right. can even do it during the week if that works better for you. Uh, yeah, is it, is four four o'clock a good time for you sometimes? Um, mm, I, work I, could too. Four, I could do four o'clock as long as I'm done by 4.45 because I have to pick up my son. Yeah, well, I I only have about fifteen or twenty minutes anyway at that time. Oh, okay, so, that so I could do it. I could do it even like as soon as tomorrow. Like that's fine. Uh, let's see. No, I have historical tomorrow. I could do it Wednesday. 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 Oh, I have be I have baseball practice. I could do it Thursday. <laughs> okay, sir. So I'll try to make an arrangement to get in at four o'clock on Thursday. Okay. Perfect. Okay. That's good. And then right. I'll I'll be in, I'll confirm that with you. Um, okay, that sounds great. Email. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, thanks. Well, we'll we'll get started, but we first need the main application. So I will focus on that this afternoon and get that out there and circulate these other documents that I mentioned, and um, we'll set up a meeting for the twenty eighth and perfect touch base and hope you guys have a good historical commission meeting and thanks. maybe you can get somebody to help you pull some some thoughts together even even just talking it through during the meeting if you you know that might just jot down some extra points that would come across so that would be great yeah for sure okay well with okay. that i think uh we should probably adjourn this grant meeting <laughs> for now and we'll get back together okay mm -hmm. okay i'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting all right i'll second that all right all those all right, thank you bye <laughs> all, right. all right take care all right thank thank you. thanks everybody This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.